Uh, something that is coming towards us probably very slowly, maybe its shoes are worn out, I don't know, is Death Stranding 2 or DS2. It was announced at the Game Awards. Apparently it's just a working title, but uh, Kojima's back at it again. Norman Reedus is back with his magical fetus. And uh, yeah, I think literally when this got announced, when this trailer was still in the middle of going on, we were sitting in the room watching the Game Awards here at IGN, and I heard someone go, should I play Death Stranding? And then I looked down at Twitter and someone else literally said, should I play Death Stranding? And I feel like that's kind of a kind of a thought that's floating around a lot. Obviously, a lot of us have um, probably played. We all have it. Jada, you played mm -hmm. it, Brian. I have not. Okay. So this that was a question I was thinking about. Okay. <laughs> Akeem, what about up. you? Have you played Death Stranding? Oh yeah. Yes. Yes, I have. All okay. right. So I'm I'm alone. Okay. I'm the one that is thinking here. Should I play Death so Stranding? Game, and now I have pick. four we people have to, here yeah. at, to, to, to fair, answer this. To be yeah. fair, I haven't finished it. I got about thirty hours in, and then I. I abandoned my baby. Okay. I left my baby. Should you finish? <laughs> That's harsh. Yeah. I mean, he's... Are you I thinking mean, about finishing harsh. it? I, I am considering it. So, like, Yusuf, is, my partner, has been playing it. He's, like, 256 hours in. He's okay. about to platinum it. It may be the one game that he platinums that I never platinum, because I don't know if I have it in me mm -hmm. to go and platinum Death Stranding, because it is just so much... So much postal work. Yeah. Um, and I come from a line. I come from a line of postal workers. I worked at the post office <laughs> oh, in college. Gosh. Okay. And... Yeah. I did everything in my power to imagine a better life for myself, and that's why I'm yeah. here at IGN. So this, um, this, this, the game hits a little too close to home. It hits for a little you. too yeah. close at home okay. for me. I love, I love, you know what my family's done in the post office. My mom's still there. Uh, she's about to retire, hopefully. Um, but yeah, like it's just, it's. I had to, I had to get out of that that's, life. That's totally fair. Yeah, I think honestly, at this point, um, I played it immediately prior to launch i pretty much just mainlined it which is the worst possible way to play that game yeah uh, like i i've often likened trying to sort of just binge huge games as um bruce bogtrotter the little boy in matilda who's forced to eat an entire chocolate cake in front of everybody that's kind of what it's like to like try to just consume a massive game like that and this specifically is a game that is very it's very zen it's about like you know traversing these you know massive areas and it's not really the fastest paced game around uh so not ideal for that. The other key thing is that it's entirely like the the it's a strand game, which means right. that it connects players in this kind of uh, anonymous, asymmetrical sort. Not anonymous, but it's it's kind of kind of what Dark Souls does, mm -hmm. where like players leave little treats and tidbits and like warnings and messages for each other. And prior to launch, that wasn't that was just like a handful of people playing. So yeah. like yeah. there wasn't really a huge ecosystem there. But the more people play the more sort of refined the world is and like they're they're it's a lot easier to to deliver mail if there are roads and if a bunch of people are playing and they put in roads then hey cool there it is i uh, think i think the coolest thing about that is that you can like set up a code and like link up with a group of people that you know and like you can all share the same thing it'll make sure that their structures appear in your world um so like that's the, if i do go back like i'll be linking up with my partners because he's already built zip lines across the whole is. world mm -hmm. and so like i can just zip line everywhere yeah the other thing is I, I played it on ps4 and since we've then we've gotten the director's cut yeah. which added a ton of like bells and whistles possibly literally there's catapults. like cir cir circus cannons that can shoot your crap across the whole <laughs> there's world like a, yep. a racing racetrack for some reason yeah I, you know my thing with this game was like i wanted to love it so much and it I, it didn't click, and I loved Metal Gear Solid Five. I love Breath of the Wild. I, I love big open world games that have a bunch of systems in play that let you do crazy stuff. Um, I love the the lead up to this game was amazing. Like the theories and the like, digging into details and just like having all these crazy ideas of what is this? What does it mean? That to me was actually more fun than the game itself. And when the game landed, I was like, this is kind of cumbersome. I'm struggling with it. I don't like it, but I understand why people adore it. And that's to me a more of a bummer than like me just playing a bad game that I hate because right. I can just kind of throw it away. But with this one, I was like, there's so much here I love and it's just not clicking with me. But that said, like the game of the year edition, they added all that stuff Max was just talking about. So Josh, I feel like for you, like, and you're somebody that you found every turd in Breath of the Wild. Right. Yeah. So like you, you, you <laughs> click with this you game is with, filled with feces. Yes. Oh, all kinds it's of bodily fluid. Shit. Perfect. It's just, yeah. I love <laughs> bodily excrement. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll be you'll be finding a lot of those. Yeah. Right. And you know, har harnessing it yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's up? I was gonna say the reason people uh, loved uh, this game, uh, Brian, uh, is because of Kojima. We love Kojima. Right. Like, I mean, like. Much like what you said, Brian, yes, I found it very cumbersome. I mean, like, I, I don't really like playing beautiful walking simulators, but you know what? This is Kojima's behind this one, so I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll give it a try. I actually have it uh, right now on my, um, uh, the, the director's cut 
uh, on my Steam Deck. So uh, I'm I I have, I'm revisiting the game on there. But again, like I just honestly, the only reason I I'm I'm still playing it is because of Kojima. If it wasn't a Kojima game, then I probably would have just like abandoned mm-hmm. this fetus a long time ago. I don't. If it wasn't a Kojima game, it wouldn't exist. And I mean that. Because I think, if, yeah, if somebody came out of the woodwork and they were like, hey, I made a game where you slowly deliver um, pa- papers to holograms who don't come out of their house, they'd be like, I don't know if we're going to yeah, give you money, you know? Right, yeah. yeah. It's the first of its kind. It's a strand game. Yes. There's going to be a series of strand games. Mm-hmm. Like, yes. okay. No, he definitely he didn't got know in, what that was. He got in at the right time. It was like mm-hmm. when they launch a new streaming platform and they're like, hey, Mike Judge, you want to make a new season of Beef is a Butthead? And he's like, well, this year when you have money, absolutely. Because next year, you won't. Mm-hmm. I, I, and see, I, I, like, I totally will i admire kojima because he is a talented game creator but his stories honestly don't do it for me so that's the hardest thing for me like i'm not the hugest metal gear fan mm-hmm. like i liked metal gear twin snakes and what? uh mg5 like in metal gear solid 5 like i played a little bit of it but like i get so lost in the stories mm-hmm. and like it's just the cutscenes are too long for me and you guys know how much I play games, and so like I, I need to be active when I'm playing, otherwise I fall asleep. And I, I did that a lot during. Twin is one of the only games where you can shoot Yoshi in the head. <laughs> <laughs> um, I but the, like the trailer for DS2 looked incredible, and I love all the the designs in that. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm in on this, and maybe I'll just watch a recap of the first game and then go yeah, through but, this whole cycle again. Yeah, but right? that's exactly how you felt about the first. I like, know, Death I know. Trailers. That's like that's it's. I felt the same way. Like, yeah. I saw this new trailer. I'm like, wow, I'm so hyped for this game, but I already know what this game is. So, so why would I? Yeah, I. Because if you look at the, the, his track record with Metal Gears, they are all mechanically pretty distinct yes like he loves to invent new systems and Mm -hmm. throw a monkey wrench into things and honestly if he would just he just like annualize metal gear and be like oh here's the continuing adventures of snake it probably would have been much more successful but instead he's like i've invented a new system where you can get food poisoning Mm -hmm. like he just loves to throw in like weird. you can kill this person by saving your game and not playing for two weeks your favorite action hero is now very old and he's sick and he's dying and he has a mustache so are you saying that like modern kojima fans who may not know all of that might have to kind of be on their toes a little here because it they, yeah. it, they could get thrown for a loop. People who put like 150 hours into Death Stranding 1 might come into 2 being like, more of the same, which I love. And he's going to be like, ah, ah, ah. I think, mm-hmm. the, I think the core mechanics are going to be there, but I would I would be very surprised if he didn't throw in a few like crazy curveballs. It, it looks like there's kind of more of an emphasis on stealth, maybe running away mm-hmm. from people based on the trailer. Again, the trailer, I, I picked over the trailers for the first one just so much like i was on the the you know crazy wingnut fan theory subreddit and just looking at all that stuff and we're like there was they would drop like a a super duper high-res photo of norman reedus's character and people were like zooming in and looking at the usb drives on his on his Mm -hmm. necklace and they had equations in them and people were like figuring out the equations and unpacking them and it was we're just like looking at everything with just a, a magnifying glass and ultimately it did, none of it. It didn't really. It didn't really. Yeah, matter, that yeah. wasn't like transferred to the gameplay of what right. it really yeah. was, right? I so mean, I mean, no matter what really... we see here, how, is it going to be representative gameplay? Like, who knows? Yeah, I mean, it didn't even translate to the story so much. Uh, I would argue that that contributes to both the gameplay and the story. Like what? the th- the th- the theories. Yeah, <laughs> that's part of the gameplay. Oh, no, it is a lot. Like, yes, that okay. is, like the the road to something. Like when somebody's like, "Oh, the game's only eight hours long," and it's like, "Well, you've been talking about it for two years, though." Yeah. So I mean, that's got to count. The whole for idea something. of a strand game is it's a thing that connects people, it brings wow. them together. And like, I don't know, we're just meet a bunch. We're of playing strangers. the game yeah. right now. Yeah, we, we are. We are playing DS2. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so are you Kojima. listening? He is revolutionizing we're definitely gaming. Get some... Oh my god. No, no, I was going to say, I'm, I'm, I don't want to cut you off, Josh. No, uh, no, no, I was going to say that we're definitely going to uh, be thrown for some curveballs mm-hmm. because, I mean, like, I, in the, based on the trailer, I, I'm pretty sure we all saw, like, there, there was an octopus baby inside of that, that damn thing. I want to know what's up with the octopus baby. That's an angel baby, my friend. That baby has wings. I was, but I mean, that one right there. No, one no, no. Wings. Okay, there well, what we're one, looking at right now, you're talking about what right, we're looking yeah. at right now, but later on in this trailer, we see... We see uh we see an octopus inside of one of in one of the um uh the 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 containers uh, that you usually have uh the bridge baby uh contained in. So it's yep. you know, so I I've seen like yeah, right there, there there it is right there. So it's like I wanna know how does that play within the, the overall game mechanics or you know, like and, and why I, is there an octopus in there? My theory is is baby cosmetics. You saw the angel wings earlier, it's a tentacle. I think you're gonna be able to unlock <laughs> cool new outfits for your baby and you'll be able to dress it up inside of that uh weird womb vat. <laughs> uh, I'm actually, I'm really excited about this. I'm really curious about this specifically because a few things have changed since I played the first game, namely 
there was a massive global pandemic that resulted in all of us hiding inside our homes and getting stuff delivered all the time, which was a little weird that that was com seemed completely far fetched. Which apparently caused Kojima to completely rewrite the game from scratch. Yes, yeah, it just makes me wonder, like, what? How much did like I? Like how, how much of the, yeah yeah what, yeah. what did he change yeah. Yeah, yeah what like now when it comes out I hope he can like reveals what the original script mm -hmm. is going to be right yeah but I mean the other thing is I've I became a dad mm -hmm. like I have a, I have a little baby now and there's like that's obviously that stuff's going to hit differently but I mean even watching the trailer I was like don't kill the kid don't kill the kid don't kill the kid because I'm a dad too and then they did I think maybe and then it did became they? an octopus sort of oh okay and then I was like. All right. Well, I guess we're just going to keep doing that then, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's um, I don't know. I'm the thing that I'm really excited about is more Yoji Shinkawa designs because yeah. he's the me mechanical character designer for all of you know Kojima's best games, and I'm just very happy he's just turned loose to do more weird stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could honestly, I I appreciate how much he's, Kojima swings for the fences with the story. Uh, I think he I think he gets lost in the weeds sometimes. You know, he definitely goes pretty far out there, mm -hmm. and it's weird because. At the same time, he has like wonderful ideas for game mechanics, and they don't always intersect with what's happening in the story. You know, they're kind of yeah. these two isolated things, especially in the first one, where it was like a lot of the a lot of the cutscenes in that, a lot of the conversations felt very much like a stage play, where you've got all these famous characters and they're like clearly interacting. Like the the performance capture in that game is great, uh, but they're not really not really doing much. Like it's kind of they're they're fairly sort of corralled in. Mm -hmm. And it's it's funny if you look at something like comparatively like God of War Ragnarok, which obviously probably a little bit of a bigger budget for that game, but you see the characters kind of interacting with the environment more, and there are like set pieces. There's more kind of action. There's more movement. Whereas a lot of the conversations and you know interactions in in the first the first Death Stranding is like, you know, Sam Bridges is just like he's in his bedroom and like maybe he's talking to a hologram, maybe he's talking to someone who's there who can't be touched. Like it's mm -hmm. a, it's it's a it's an odd kind of separation between you know narrative and uh you know ludo and narrative it, i guess it's a it's a fascinating series to look at considering it's running on the decima engine and like the other contemporary you know example of that is the horizon series which is historically busy and uh cluttered and just overly designed if anything right like there's just non-stop like oh look there's a river there's a rock there's a, a rat and a, 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 an animal is running by a forest and a dilapidated bridge whereas you look at death stranding and it's like it's it's minimalist it's it's quiet it's bleak um it's gray and i i kind of appreciate that this engine is flexible enough to do both of those things so well so distinctly that for the average person walking by you wouldn't ever guess that they're coming from the same place interesting yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think I will give it a shot. Give it a shot. I'm going to try it. I mean, based on the way you guys are describing it, it sounds like one of those games that, yeah, you definitely shouldn't just mainline it, pretend it's like a right. linear narrative type of game, like God of War or something, where you're like, I have to find out what happens next. Yeah. Like, kind of just relax. That's honestly how I play Far Cry 6. I still haven't beaten that game, but because there's just so much to do, and like... Obviously, the gameplay is not going to be exactly the same. Like, uh, but I approach Far Cry in a way where I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to uh, skydive into the spot, grab this little collectible, and I'll do a few of those, and I'm good. I'm done. Like, I play maybe an hour or two of that game every time I sit down, and mm -hmm. like, I am satisfied. If you took Far Cry Six and gave it a heaping dose of barbiturates, you would have Death Stranding, where like instead of skydiving in, you're just like you're kind of moseying up. Maybe you take your little motorcycle, <laughs> which is rusting rapidly because you drove through a haunted rainstorm or whatever. Yep, hit a ramp and yeah. do, a, do a little trick. I just I love that you, you know you think of what a director's cut is, and typically it's like oh it's maybe it's more story, and it's like in a Kojima game it's like he added jump kicks and catapults and a racetrack. You're like why not? All right, <laughs> that was cut from the original game, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I mean honestly, give it a shot. I yeah. think. I, I hope Death Stranding 2 takes everything that the first game did and just builds on it and gets completely nuts and gets weird weirder and has fun with it. And, uh, you know, it's uh, we have no idea when that's coming or if it's even going to be called Death Stranding 2, but th there it is. I'm, I don't know. I'm stoked. Yeah.